Gotta have that coffee kick in. Hashtag not sponsored. Now, I already told you uh, what I bought here. This is the rebuild kit from Holly. And yes, it says breaking this seal prohibits the return and or crediting of this carburetor kit. Check for loose parts between carton and film before opening. I don't see any. Basically, they don't want you to lose anything. So very carefully open it up. And what I'm going to do is very carefully inspect the packaging because there are some teeny tiny, teeny tiny parts. And because I know my workspace is cleaned off, I can dump it all out and I will do the same thing inside, make sure there's nothing stuck in between, and if it's all good, we'll recycle it. Now, personally, I'm disappointed in the instructions that they give you inside of this kit, because in my mind, these are not instructions. Uh, the, these are a, a gateway to a disaster. Um, they, they only give you very simplistic things. A very blurry, exploded view. Uh, some nice specifications um, that don't necessarily help with everything along with some needle and seat cross-reference and troubleshooting chart. Again, not terribly helpful, but if that's all you need, well, you're miles ahead of me. All right, we have some big gaskets in here. We have some smaller gaskets in here. We have some blue gaskets in here. You know, I don't think my other one came with a choke. Piece of cardboard. Interesting. Um, I don't think it came with these either. Uh, some diaphragm stuff, and then all the teeny tiny parts are in here. And when I say teeny tiny, um, I don't even know if you can see the little ball in there, uh, your, your cotter pins, your, your little C-clamps, uh, you've got tiny O-rings in here, uh, pieces of plastic, that red pain in the butt doodad, uh, your needles, just be careful, okay, just be careful. So, I will not open any bags until I'm ready for them. Now, there's some parts in here that may I may need to do some more disassembly just to get to them. I don't know. I'm going to do some more research on them because... Some of these parts I know exactly what they're for because I've dealt with them before. Some of these I don't know. May have made a little mistake. I don't know yet, we'll find out. I took out what I believe is called the pump shooter. So way inside of here, there was a screw. When I took it out, there was a screw a badly mangled washer, piece of metal, another washer, and that little teeny tiny brass doodad. Now, I believe I have some washers to replace those. If 
hopefully. Um, we do have this here that we can replace because I saw that. Right there. So we'll replace that. After that, I don't see anything else that we can necessarily replace. There is a red piece of plastic here, but there is nothing that I have to replace that with, so I will leave that alone. Um, and that was all I saw. All right, first part has been replaced. Let's uh, get to work on the rest. Now, I will give full credit to uh, Muscle Car DIY, their July 16th, 2017, How to Assemble a Holly Carburetor Rebuild Guide. Uh, it has so far been the best one I have found to date. Um, nice pictures, a lot of words, so I recommend printing that out if you can. So I'm actually going to use this as my primary guide just because so far it seems to be the best one out there. Okay, now if you paid attention, your gas is here and that butterfly is right there. However, we need a gasket in between. Big question is, which one do we use? Because frankly, they all look about the same. Now the one I took off Without confusing them, I'm going to put an X on it, so I know that's the old one. Okay. All right, so after a lunch break, I've <laughs> discovered, one, I needed to recharge my cameras, because they both ran out at some point in time, and two, I was uh, able to get my torque wrench set up. These are to be tightened to, it said, 30 to 50 inch pounds. And I just set that torque wrench to the wrong thing. If you've never used a torque wrench before, basically it does just what it says. It tightens to a specific pressure, in this case 40 inch-pounds, and it's probably a little hard to see in here. but your torque wrench will give a little pop, a little snap. And this is how you set it, you just pull this and spin it. So 40 inch pounds, done. So we have installed the main body gasket and torqued the main body screws. Now we need to make sure everything is below the surface there. And we are, we're good. Mount carburetor to work stand. Guess what, I already did that. Now we have what they call the metering block assembly, which is on the primary bowl, which sets up front. Install the power valve. Well, let's uh, 
you know what? Before we get there, let's stick this bad boy back on here. And we have a shiny new. Somebody please tell me what these things are called. These little C clamp doodads. Because I can't remember for the life of me. See, so there's a good picture in here that shows how this goes together. Like thus. All right, so here's our old one. Give you a little bit of an exploded view. All right, uh, the power valve. Interesting. This one is 6.5 and this one is 6.0. I know that makes a difference for some people, but not me. It says I'm supposed to use a specialty power valve wrench, which I don't have. Use a torque wrench to tighten 40 to 50 inch pounds. All right, nothing like uh, going to your dad's house because you need tools. Just one little adapter was all I needed. All right, so we said 40 to 50 inch pounds. So again, I'm going to split the difference. So there's 40, 45. Forty-five inch pounds. That is our power valve, right? These need to go in at thirty to forty inch pounds. So thirty to forty again. Split the difference. Makes it thirty-five and. Done. I do not have a vent whistle in this. Don't even know what one is. So, we're just gonna skip right over that. Now we know that is the old gasket, right? So we're gonna mark that as such. Set it aside because next we have to organize our accelerator pump components. It's definitely getting late in the day and I am getting sarcastic. Getting stuff out of these bags without dumping them out and filling them back up again is so much easier when you have some little pliers or a little screwdriver that you can use. It uh, seems a little ridiculous, but it works. All right, now there are no lock washer replacements. So anyway, so this is the um, little diaphragm that goes on the main or the primary bowl. It's gonna be a nightmare to edit. Oh, so long. So I need to lightly lubricate it, it says, and I'm just gonna use some petroleum jelly. And you know, it's probably gonna be easier. 
stick some in there and then on here all right now this goes in that center hole now you can try pushing last time it didn't work I pushed and pushed and pushed what I actually had to do was while I was pushing again with the small pliers grab it and give a little gentle pull reposition if you have to give it a twist there we go now incredibly hard to see but there is a little knob there probably easier to see on here see this little knob that's got to go through and be on the inside so that this sits absolutely flush and then you take your dikes and as close as you can cut that extra off that's an awfully crooked cut that's a little better okay so you see See, I cut some off, okay? Now, again, I sanded this to make it nice and flat. They're calling this the accelerator pump diaphragm. The key part I've noticed is, besides making sure the spring goes in there, is making sure it's up. And then you can put this on. And of course you want to get everything lined up. Now if you skipped over the part where I sanded and you're not sure why I sanded, it's because I'm pretty sure the screws here were over tightened which means it bent that piece to the point that it leaked. And I think, seriously, that was uh, part of my problem. Because I really cranked on them and I really shouldn't have. But I did, but I shouldn't have. So just get them going by hand here. Make sure you've got that lock washer sitting right under the head of the screw. Now I only sanded them a little bit because I didn't want them to bottom out. And these get torqued to five inch pounds. So there is 20, 15, 10, well I can only go down to 7 inch pounds. So 7 inch pounds it is. And just like a car tire, I'm going to do a crisscross pattern. To make sure it's tight, but not too tight and warped. Done. 
All right, now it talks about installing the floats later, which make absolutely no sense to me because I need to install the floats now. So we have our float and spring. It's gonna be hard to see in here for you, but it just goes on that little rod there. And if I take my screwdriver, I can appropriately seat the spring in there. Now, remember those little C clamps? We need one now. And we need it to hold our float in. I can put the guard in now. Now be careful with these washers. They are different. And I will show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so this first washer fits snug around the threads. The second washer is loose on the threads because it is going to fit snug or go around that jet. Now remember that jet is oblong. Okay. And the way to adjust your float, okay, so you have a screw and then that weird nut. You hold it upside down and you turn not the screw, but the nut. And you'll see if you can draw an imaginary level line here. What I've been doing is I've been looking at the back at this line and this line up here. You'll see that the float sits too high. And all you want to do is make it level across there. So when you make it level, when you've got it where you want it, that's when you tighten down the screw. And it gets a little tricky. What you've got to do is get a screwdriver and you've got to get an open end socket. Oh, said I was supposed to lubricate that. Damn. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Forgot to lubricate the O-ring on the jet. Alright, so you're going to take a 5 8 open end and hold that in place. So you've got it adjusted. So you're going to hold that in place and then use a nice big screwdriver to tighten. Those, I'm not aware of any torque setting that you're supposed to do. Um, uh, it says to use a uh, 5 8 box end. Well, it's all the same to me. We've got our viewport there that we need a new o-ring on I guess technically it's a washer not an o-ring don't need to really crank too much on those all right now we get to have fun with gaskets Okay, so I know this is my old one. If I look, I can match up the new one. This is also my old one. Mm, but there's two that are very s similar. Some reference tabs, little knobbies, so that you can't stick them in the wrong way. 
backwards. See, they, they don't they don't fit. See, now they fit. Okay. Now, remember your primary bowl goes up front. Again, you have reference tabs. And again, we're going to look for the reference tabs. And if I do it the wrong way, On this one, it doesn't seem to care. They match. All right, so that goes there, that goes there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little pinhole here, and a little pinhole there. That's how you know that they match up. Okay, uh, we need our screws. So you know those uh, plastic washers I was telling you about? Well, if you look super duper close, you can see there's a little edge. The smaller edge goes in to the block. So they're supposed to set in there. And I think, ideally, they're not supposed to come out. But... We can see... That's... Not always the case. Now on my secondary metering block, these little washers didn't come out. Alright. There we go. Make sure this is down, this little lever over here, it's important. There we go. Now, just gently get them started. Remember you've got a bowl and a metering block go through. There you go. So the reason you want to make sure this is down is because if it's going the wrong way, it won't work. But there's plenty of play here, so we're okay. Because I left that adjustment loose. Okay, your instructions did not go in order. I could have done this when it was apart, but you didn't tell me. Son of a bitch. Sorry. That's apparently something. It needed to be done. in the metering block. Continue to gently tighten the mixture screw with a small flat blade screwdriver until it just bottoms out, then back it out about one and a half turns. And apparently I'm supposed to use these cork ones. It's always fun when your camera runs out of battery.
All right. Let's get this tightened down. The instructions here say 25 to 30 inch pounds. So we'll do 27. Again, in a crisscross, it's uh, probably hard to see, but inside of here, they're calling this the discharge nozzle. So we'll stick that back in, but we need new washers. And I should have known that, but I didn't mess with it. So let's get some new washers. A float and spring to install. So the choke has apparently that cork doodad that we will replace with a new one. Okay, and then what? So there are one, two, three screws. The tricky part is in here. So you have the butterfly valve and there's this rod that comes through and goes into the back side of the choke. There's a hole there and there's a, a cotter pin I need to put in. But this red plastic needs to be above that whole rod assembly and what it does is you'll see it moves the choke here and I just I put the screws in real quick to um, make sure it didn't fly away on me the electric choke here and then right next to it is this valve that is a pain to manage so let me get out my new cotter pin Okay. Let me get rid of my old cotter pin. There we go. A little um, manipulation there. I don't know that it matters which way the cotter pin goes, as long as you can get it in there. There we go. So now.
All right, so we got that in. We got our new little gasket here in. Now, inside of the choke here. Let's uh, get rid of some old parts we don't need. Okay. Uh, choke. There we are. So, I think I said this before. This needs to match up with this. So see, when you give a gas, the butterfly valve opens, and when you let off the gas, it's good. Now, you put this on. But don't tighten one all the way down and then go to the next one. You've got to do it evenly so that this metal ring will seat evenly. Let's see, I forgot to tighten these up.